Konnichiwa, you just watch Boy Cock, a better reaction video. And this is my second time recording this video, guys. So I've already seen this video in the, in this in in its in its entirety. I've seen this whole video. Greedy Gotcha Games tier list 2022. Uh for some reason, um I recorded the video on my uh my laptop and for some reason and then the video didn't get saved onto my laptop. I don't know this happens once every so often when I record a video. So I literally gotta record this whole thing again. So my first reaction to this not gonna be there. I already kind of know what's gonna happen in the video now because I recorded it, but for some reason it didn't show up in my computer, which is like weird. Anyway, um, yeah. So we're gonna get into this video, guys. Uh, yeah. So without further ado, get right into it. So play. Yo, folks, and welcome. In today's video, we'll be going over. It just the sucks. I already seen this already. Tier list. Lowest being extremely pay to win. Highest not being that pay to win. Why exactly am I covering this to help you from falling into cash grabs when it comes to gacha games, mobile titles, and mobile MMOs? And quick disclaimer: these are all opinions. If you have a differing opinion, like tier list. Yeah, like video, I said before, it's always gonna be opinion based. With it's always been a tier list. You can see they own so many different titles. They got the Sword Art Online franchise, One Piece, Slime, Easy Kai. My hero and Sammy I don't think I remember seeing that the first time. Now that should be a quick hint as to how well this is going to be rated on the tier list. I'm gonna put Dragon Ball Z Doken as the front piece for the Bandai Namco's because Doken's been around for a couple of years and they have anniversaries and giveaways. So Doken's been ahead of legends then available to play for free to play. There is a heavy dupe system, but it's not to the point where you can't play the game. This is a puzzle RPG, so it doesn't. Like I said before, I don't understand how do you supposed to play that with that puzzle stuff. I don't get it. And just tackle events. I don't think that's the case. The Dokken community is pretty great. The Dragon Ball Z community is amazing of itself. But outside of that, Bandai Namco is going to be one of the ones that pump and dump anime IPs. This is the Dragon Ball Z is the goat of all but anime, Dokken but it's me. is one of the few exceptions where they don't completely frown upon the franchise. If you look at the other series, they have had Naruto games that have shut down. They have had One Piece games that have shut down. If you actually look at the numbers, they're doing well on Dragon Ball Legends. And with that all being said, is this one of those pay-to-win publishers or gacha games dragon ball z doken and the bandai namco i would place them in b tier because they are not, not bad. too extensive when it comes to being able to play the game and enjoy them it would only go down to c tier if you can't play the game just one of the worst monetized things i don't think dragon ball z doken or bandai namco or any of their games are absolutely unplayable hence why i place them in b tier not in a tier that's why i never got into playing like the much gotcha games, dragon ball z game well, i don't know that gameplay is kind of like weird to me games. if you guys have never heard of this company i would stay a little yeah i didn't know who these people were first time i was watching you this you can see they have this guy rpg dola fantasy atelier graffiti smash now some of you might be wondering are these games fun are they all right all i have to say is these games are dead in their original region so what does that entail they have to start becoming devs in order to continue developing this game and make it into a better series over time and like i said now before the question is as beautiful as the disguise series i always is, wonder like how do you supposed to keep development on a mobile gotcha and like how does that work with like the, how much money you make into like it either is dies or it keeps going, going to be a lasting thing you can look at the numbers 300k that is a pretty great number but imagine the cost just to maintain, advertise, and then also run a dev team. It's quite a decent sum. They've done. That's what I'm saying. Like, how much does it cost for like uh, overall revenue? I don't think uh, that's so bad, company. But for them to buy up all these IPs or to at least have the way to publish them within the USA's and give us a decent game, it's kind of hard. Not to mention they do codes. They do what they can in order to keep these games alive. But they are known as the zombies of gotcha games. If that makes any sense, right? The zombies. So where do I place? them i place them in c tier why is that because i don't want folks to put too much money into them you can play them you can progress in them but i would not recommend people to play these games right with monetization being on your mind just play them for fun. it's weird though because i thought this whole time the fgo was gonna be on this Crunch list and fgo was not so on this Crunch list Roll has princess connect mitra sphere my hero and bloodline last warrior 
if we take a look at Princess Connect and the way it's been happening for the past, I, I think it's almost two years, at least a year, that's for sure. It's been a pretty decent monetized game. If you are jumping in from the bat, it is not that crazy when it comes to monetization, if you're a casual. And if you guys are curious, how much money have I spent on this game? You can actually see it right here. These are numbers from both the JP and you'll notice that this is from 2021. If you actually scroll all the way up, I haven't spent money on any of this stuff for quite some right. time right and here's the calculator i did some maths earlier it's crazy when these games he spends like 75 dollars at one point in one of them it's crazy playing this for you know a year and a half two years my two dollars not bad though for two years one of the more free to play franchises but it's only been a year so it's hard to gauge usually two years that's where things get choppy but if you look at the numbers right here 800k princess connect going strong with that all being said where do i rate this crunchyroll i think they're going to be in a tier because of personal bias with the way they've handled princess connect other ips like overlord they would be in b tier because they sort of pump and dump in that one they do have like the same sort of connections in bandai where they get ips and they drop them if they don't perform but at the end of the day they do a lot of giveaways i like them this is probably personal bias and i will give them a tier for that one eu games or au however way you i'm still it. never heard there's a lot of these companies i've never heard of are these people if you look at this they are a bunch of game releasers there is just so many things that they are releasing at a constant pace and what does that entail they are just copying their own games astral guardians and then Gaia Odyssey, they look oddly similar. You can look at Starlight Isle. It looks oddly similar to Gaia Odyssey. They are recycling their MMOs like crazy. And some of you might be wondering, is that okay? Is that like monetization friendly? Whether the MMO is fun to play, they are just pumping oh, like, games like crazy. And this is probably one of the worst practices that you can get within the mobile sphere. I don't know if they have gotcha mechanics. It would probably be worse if they had gotcha mechanics. But at the end of the day, I can't recommend these games you can also look at the revenues they're not doing that great even though they're pumping games out left and right this is mm -hmm. going to be au games uss and i would have to say on the tier list they are definitely going the c tier and they are probably one of the worst this <laughs> one copies itself like some sort of cancer it's weird copy oh, and paste right. wow that's a difficult one some of you are like Bored. now this are is gish impact people the right sphere, the whole gish impact is like nothing in genshin game that they had on there too genshin well, the rail or something like that i was like what is genshin rail the game entirely free to play it's been proven by countless people and you know he runs a free to play team on one of his accounts i know he has a pay to win account or just a normal account it's not even is that normal though as like creators to have like a free to play and then have a when you buy like a pay to win that's the thing that i want to say and you can enjoy all of the game with what it has to offer without doing any summoning whatsoever. Let's not forget that Hoyoverse also has Honkai Impact 3rd, Tears of Themis, and other IPs. But the biggest note is Hoyoverse Greedy. If you look at the world that they have built, if you look at all the things that they constantly do to advertise their games and make Yes, it is. I don't even know what this was. I know about Honkai Impact 3rd. I know about Gishi Impact, but not this. 25 million that they've earned last Sheesh. month back into their game. So where does that lead them at the end of the day on the tier list? I'm going to place them on A tier. They're not S tier. Some would say they definitely belong in B tier because it takes three to four months to save for a character. But I say they put enough resources. They pay their employees. They are pretty decent with I mean, I hope they're paying employees making that much. It's just uh, one of revenue. the greatest gacha games. They've changed the way we look at gacha games and the mobile sphere. It's quality over quantity. That's all I have to say. They don't pump IPs like Dragon Ball. They don't recreate and zombify franchises like Voltren. They're a cut above above everyone else. But when it comes to monetization, they're not S here because, you know, some people spend three hundred forty dollars just to pity a character, maybe two hundred dollars, or you save three to four months in order to do something. Mm. So that's where I put Hoyoverse. Next one's Konami. This is an interesting one because Konami only has Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links and Eden Zero. And neither of them have gotcha mechanics, but they do have eFootball, which is pretty pay to win in its own right. All right. So let's talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. As a franchise, it's a trading card game. So it's going to be power crep over time because you need more. I played Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links back in the day, but then I stopped like way back then. But it is one of those things that last forever. And of course, my condolences to the creator of the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise. Right. What an amazing man. Freaking goat. And and just, it just sucks that he died the way he died, though, out there in the water. They're actually not doing that crazy for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. You can see. 
but still a crazy number compared to all the other people that we've covered like Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links is doing more than Princess Connect by itself, right? But if you look at all the different games that they have, such as the professional baseball spirits, this is definitely something to be kind of wary of. But Konami doesn't pump and dump their IPs. If you don't touch I've never seen this soccer game dump for Konami. Like, i never even seen it at all anywhere until this video. And they continue to support the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise properly. On the tier list, I'm going to place them on the same leagues as Bandai Namco. Some could argue you could actually place them in A tier, but the thing is, they don't do anything that different. Hmm. You can see like that personal bias for Princess Connect is definitely showing, but at the same time, I will leave Konami in A tier because I feel like they deserve it for. This or is FGO not as because this the type of people they only they made really that type of game? No, uh, I don't know. I guess he just think Neo it's greedy. Or is a very interesting one. They don't have that many IPs, and you would not be able to tell that they're that aggressive when it comes to monetization and pay to win. But one thing to know is that the MMO RPGs that they release. They're kind of clones of other games, or they're not that inspired. You can tell by the UI, and they're not really showing off. Characters do look cool, though, in this they, game, they but like you say, just character. copy and paste. Like, it's like, okay, like where's repeat from stuff sort of genre to genre game to game. The most important things to know is that Neocraft isn't the worst of AU, but it is a better version of AU games. And some of you might be like, why is that? If you look at it, they have League of Pantheons. If you don't know what League of Pantheons is, I like never heard of this game. Of Clone. And, and don't like that's my type of game I want to play on my mobile game. Especially streaming it like on Twitch or slash YouTube. Nah. Wind, this is heavily advertised like Raid Shadow Legends. And it's just direct copy of their other MMOs. <laughs> Raid Shadow Legends. And look, I am all about like, hey, crazy good MMOs, proper advertising and marketing. That's fine on my regard. Problem is, is when you sort of copy each other and release the same games over and over again. That's uninspired. Well, the monetization is okay. I don't think these games have like an extensive game break life Infinity. cycle. And if you look at the revenues right here, they're around two million, which isn't bad, but most of it's covered by their newer IPs. Their older IPs aren't that well supported. Where do I rate Neocraft? I'm gonna place them a little bit above AU games, still in C tier. I wouldn't touch them just because they're uninspired. Monetization. <laughs> I wouldn't touch them. Not going anywhere. They're just doing it to revive other games. And they're not innovating the space like the way Hoyoverse is, right? Next okay. one is NetEase. So NetEase Net right here, they have the OmniGs, they have Life After, and one thing I want to say looks they pretty have sick though. D as their IPs, but all that needs to be known about NetEase games is they're not exactly the most predatory and they're not exactly the worst. I've read reviews on OmniG. It's your standard summon, get your gotcha going and flowing. You grind and it has, I guess, more of like a Summoner's War old school flow because it is like from the times when that was all popular. It has decent graphics, but it's not doing anything crazy. The anniversaries are okay. The giveaways are okay. But when it comes down to it, is this going to be pay to win? Is this one of those games that you have to, you know, just sink a lot of money in? No, it's an old school gotcha experience. So instead of sinking old school a lot gotcha. of money into it, you're going to be sinking a lot of time to make time. it. So where does this okay. exactly land? I would say it's in the realms of B tier because it's not doing anything exciting. It's not pumping and dumping and I it's like just in between. Ed Ease doesn't really do that, but it's definitely not one of the ones I would say is like, oh my gosh, it's like on the same levels as Konami and Hoyo versus monetization because of the amount of time you have to spend in order to get the best bang for your buck for it. But if you like mm -hmm. that sort of stuff, then maybe you can place it in A tier. Right. Marvel Super One War. of the baddies, Net Marvel. What do I think of them? Oh my God! With the recent release of Nino Kuni, this is a famous franchise. Nino Kuni Cross Italy. Worlds. I have to give them probably the lowest rating because it's not. Damn, the lowest rating. That's the problem. It's the fact that you cannot enjoy the game without spending money. That's the real issue with games that. Netflix oh yeah, well if you gotta do. Well, I forgot about that. Yeah, if you gotta do that to enjoy the game, then you have to spend money. There's, you know, so many giveaways. But no they deal. start to add paywalls to content. That's nasty. It's difficult to access or difficult to do without either spending an inexorbitant time of grinding or you just get a pack and skip all the grind in order to enjoy the game. When your gameplay is hindered by the fact of monetization, that's where I draw the line. It's not the NFTs. It's not even the bot issues. It's just the fact that you can't actually enjoy the game without spending some money on it. And that, that, really that like, pig or whatever <laughs> the I thing is, is like, what? On Seven Deadly Sins. I spent hundreds of dollars. I spent more money it's on awesome. Seven Deadly Sins back in the day 
Yeah, yeah seventy nine ninety nine. I played played eighty that bucks on something. Tell you how much I I, I like Seven Deadly Sins. I like the anime. I, I got dropped it here and there, really but never game would not. Gameplay wise, I enjoyed Seven Deadly Sins. Like Marvel Future Fight, I did play that. I didn't put any money on that. But I don't recommend people to put money or any weight in Net Marvel. I don't trust them whatsoever. They do numbers. That's for sure. Twenty two million. Nothing to scoff at. And people are pumping money into Nino Kuni like crazy. But please, if you see this video, just stop it. Just play the game, you know, for whatever. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> and stop putting money into it. I am going to be placing a net marble at the very last. If I could create a net marble tier, I would. Because I think they're worse than Voltren. And the way they eventually get pay to win or more greedy as the game lasts longer. It never gets better. It only gets worse. But hey, for the first couple of months, Net Marvel. Seven Nights nice Revolution. Game. So if you're into playing a gacha game for a first month or so and just having a good time, then maybe you could say they're like A or B tier in some ways. But they're easily one of the worst and greediest publishers, greediest gacha games. Okay, but that transition was oh, pretty, uh, pretty Nexon. sick. So Nexon is one of those places where it's like, I just want to. To poop all over you. We all know. Okay, page. <laughs> hey, they did that. Hey, that's man. That's crazy. And that's. I'm gonna go into that. That's that's what's funny. I think they handled this IP. With I remember seeing these anime a lot at my job, like with the manga, like the books, with that little girl, with that hat. The reason why I know that I talked to the community managers for this, they have like their own Twitch person. I'm this is like a really popular sorry, thing overseas. Then. This game is handled with everything that they could possibly do. It's like the best parts of Nexon. Now, does this outweigh the bad of Nexon? Like what they do on a regular basis? You can see Konosuba Fantastic Days. It's not like the k from breadwinner for them. Nah. And Blue Archive, it is. 90 k for 70 k I see some I 1 million. Blue Archive is also a decently monetized game where does everything sit at the end of the day for nexon they are still in you could argue they're in b tier for corn super fantastic days and blue archive but we all know that's not all that it's supposed to be they yeah. are above voltren in some ways because they are supporting Does the heavy super lift them enough and blue archive franchise properly but any other times where it's not those two games or any other times they don't try and we don't know what's going to happen a year or two for those games I'm just gonna leave them in C tier because we all know Nexon is bad juju. Same thing with Net Marvel. They're a little bit better than all these other IPs, hence why I'm rating them first in the C tier range. But man, just be careful when you play their games because you just don't know when they're gonna turn cult like Net Marvel. Net Marvel is just a little bit faster than the others when it comes to becoming pay to win. Okay, Nintendo right Nintendo. here, Fire Emblem Heroes, one of the first GameCube games I've ever played. If you've never heard of Fire Emblem Heroes, Fire Emblem Heroes is the biggest breadwinner for Nintendo. No, I never had. The funny thing is, I never and did hear really about them, though. I enjoyed this game. It has a fun tactical feel to it. I think they revolutionized the quick pace because a lot of tactical RPGs on the mobile fronts were a little slower. But when it comes to monetization, Nintendo kept throwing pay to win at your face constantly. And it really annoyed me to like probably some of the craziest degree. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just go ahead and look at this. All right. Back in 2017, I was spending money. You know, that boy was $40, out there. $30, $75. And it just kept going and going. And like I said, that's, that's probably like what this was almost my 200 plus right, right of, there. Like actually spending money on gotcha games. And I did not stop until eventually around <laughs> Poke coins. something like that. And man, that ten dollars was like the last straw back then, because I was like, "What the heck am I doing, spending money on this game when I know they're just gonna release another brand new character?" Even though they give away five stars like crazy, I glory even Martha, they give my boys, like man. crazy, it still hurts. All right, because I wanted every single character. Is this pay to win? Is this monetized heavily? Is it like unplayable? When you have to, you know, you don't have to get any of these in the world. That's all I have to say. You can play this game free to play to a certain extent because of the generosity they provide. But man, I cannot recommend them. And they somehow made Mario Kart. A yeah, Mario Kart Tour. How do you monetize Mario Kart, though? I never thought I would see the day on that. But I definitely know Fire Emblem Heroes. Only reason I know about that is because uh, the YouTuber Dashy was playing and, and I was watching said, him. I am going to place them in B tier. They're not worse than Nexon. But man, there are some points in Fire Emblem Heroes where I'm like, yo, you belong in C tier. But for the benefit and the history, it's like, yo, you belong in C tier. No. Worst ones. I don't consider them, don't play them. C tier, I don't play these games, all right? Or these IPs. 
Rage Shadow Legends. This should be pretty obvious for everyone, right? Come on now. Rage Shadow Legends, do we really have to say anything about this? This is the most milk advertised game that you have ever seen. If you have not seen an ad for Raid Shadow Legends, this video is not sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, by the way. And that's sad. That's me, sad. And all I have to say is... You that's really sad. He has to say that. Okay? He has to Don't say that it's not sponsored. That's how much they sponsor the so many people of this minutes, game. You're probably going to have a pack thrown at you. This is legit adware on your phone. Adware is stuff where they just throw ads at you or they throw just random information that's not even the gameplay. And look, Raid Shadow Legend, it's definitely very successful. Just look at the numbers for this game. 10 Sheesh, million. That 10 is million. crazy. If you look at their overall IP, it's 12 million. They have like Mech Arena and some other stuff. But dude, all of the money is just being pumped back into advertising for Raid Shadow Legend. I can't say this is like the worst game. But when it comes to greediness, come on guys. This is easily C tier. They're only slightly above Net Marble mm, in some ways. In my they're probably the worst. But, man. They are pretty damn bad. Worse than Boltran, worse than these MMOs, just because of how much monetization, how much greed they want to do in order for you to enjoy and play this game. There might be some ways where you can do a free-to-play experience for Raid Shadow Legends, but I don't know how exactly that happens. I don't even want to cover it. Raid Shadow Legends definitely one of the worst when it comes to greed in the Gotcha Hemisphere or just in the mobile. Plaram Global. The kings Where of the Final Fantasy franchizes near Automata's and RPG. Final Fantasy never Where gonna exactly die. Do I place? And we're gonna use Final Fantasy Brave Exvius as the template for them. This game is old. It's same just like uh, no gun. But I know that people have played this. But game I still have never heard of this game. There is like a free to play aspect to it. Let's say I don't really play Final I Fantasies on mobile or whatever. I play on console. Continue to milk them forever and ever. Because the Final Fantasy franchise will never die. And all the IPs that Square owns will never die. Just like how Echoes of Mana. They are like a reverse Uno card from Boltran because they revive games that are already dead. But they maintain them with a very hefty degree. And they will support them to the dying. Which makes sense. Yeah, Square Enix always do that Square though with their, with their IPs. If you look at the revenue, 31 million. Most of it is going through overseas franchises. It's not really like FFBE here. You know, 500k definitely still a crazy number for the visions. You know, FFBE 600k, one of the older franchises, fairly successful. And just note the numbers last updated, so be wary of that. But when it comes down to it, I think Square is decent with the way you can play and handle their games. They're not exactly like a pay to way experience in order to enjoy them. I'd say I said I've never played the Nier series yet, though. Dissidia, Final Fantasy, Opera. I played Dissidia before on PSP, on but never that, though. Some can argue it's B tier, but they just don't abandon stuff. And like I said, it's a reverse bull trend where they revive an IP, but at the same but time, the at the bottom and at the top. if only bull trend could probably support this guy, it would be probably higher because they're pretty decent about codes and giveaways. Some of you might have been wondering what the heck is level infinite? What is PUBG doing on this tier list whatsoever? The thing is, is PUBG yeah, I've never played. I don't never think so. It. It's a battle royale. I don't know how you make battle royale. It's popular. I was about to play PUBG. Play all the battle royales like the Warzone and stuff like that of Call of Duty. I don't think you buy guns or any of that stuff. That doesn't sound like a battle royale sort of thing. But when it comes down to it, if you look at the numbers, PUBG is their bread. I don't understand how you make a battle royale pay to play, uh, pay to win. The skins really ain't well nothing. I mean, the bundles are called the yeah, technically speaking, maybe. For now, I'm gonna give but, them a neutral rating of B because I just don't know where to gauge them, and I'm gonna put them a little bit above Omiji and Nintendo. Alchemy Stars is just a really great game. If Tour Dog Studios was here, you know, they would be like in S tier because I think Alchemy Stars is phenomenal. But this is net ease. That's the one I'm covering. So it's going to go in B tier. Okay. Lastly, I think Warzone will probably Yostar. go in C tier. If you guys don't know who Yostar is, let's talk about them. Azure Lane in particular. Azure yeah, Lane I've seen Azure Lane a lot. Gotcha game and I remember I've seen that a lot. I think you guys remember me play that a lot. Anytime you want. There is like speed up currency in order to make it so that the summon goes faster. If you don't know how it works, you put in ship blueprint and based on the RNG, you get a certain character you know certain waifu you can marry your waifus you get skins and all sorts of things the only thing pay to win about this game is the skins and i guess you could do more runs of certain stages and whatnot or you could smash through arena whatever you want to do but you can summon all of the waifus for free 
I think Azure Lane is the best monetized game. I think Yostar knows how to monetize its games properly. Right. One thing is Revive Witch is a blotch on their record. Dark Knights, while it's not completely free-to-play friendly, you can tackle every single stage with every single character that they provide. And y'all told me to play that play as well. All you have to do is have a five-head level brain, or you can just watch YouTube and copy the five. Where do I rate Yostar? Easily S tier. The only S tier gotcha game publisher mobile title, I would have to say. Yes, you could argue Hoyover. You could argue like the placement of all of these, but I'm pretty happy with where we landed right here. I think this is where I see greed levels for a majority of gotcha games. And you could argue for some levels of being like Net Marvel should have its own tier, like I said. <laughs> yeah, Marvel should have its own tier. But, so yeah, bad. This is my greediest gotcha game publisher developers tier list sort of thing. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you All right, so we're, in, we're going off right there, guys. Uh, subscribe to uh, his channel. Like I said, a uh, link will be sure right down below. Greediest gotcha games tier list. Bokoro. Borkorno Bo, Bo, Bo Gaming. So they only have one S tier, which is, uh, what's this? Yo, Yostar? Um, so based off this list, do you guys agree, disagree, or would you, would you guys play stuff different within this tier list? And if FGO was on this tier list, where do you guys think FGO should be ranked within this tier list? Let me know in the comments down below. I said, hopefully this time this video gets recorded. If not, then I'm just going to end up recording something else. Uh, anyway, but like I said, hopefully this actually gets recorded for you guys. So, um, uh, you guys will see this. If it gets, if it gets recorded, obviously then it's going to get out to the channel, but if not, then you guys won't see this, but yeah, it's my second attempt at this video, so like I say, uh, if you guys like it, sub like on the video, help the channel grow a lot, comment down below, um, I like to have discussion in, in there as well, and subscribe channel, we're like about, what, six or seven off of 1,400 subscribers, so yeah, when you talk, I'm out, here.